So I remember walking into a, um, a restroom stall um, and seeing the words written in black, Sharpie marker, I hate being a black girl. And, you know, as a person who can memorize handwritings, I knew who the person was. And so it becomes that moment in how do you address this story? Because obviously, you know, a child that's 10 really is internalizing self-hatred, right? And it's always so painful when you see black students who hate themselves um, at a really young age. And so it's like, I, I have to speak, I have to say something because you don't want to grow into a black woman who hates yourself. Uh, and so I talk uh, to the young, to the young um, lady, the young woman, as I often call, you know, my little black sisters, whether it's by blood or by love, because I want them to know that they are something, they are worthy, they are human. And I asked her, you know, why did you write that? And her response was, you know, I hate my hair. Um, I want it to be straight. I want it this way. And it's like, but that's how God has made you. You're beautiful. You're wonderfully made. There's nothing wrong with you. There's no such thing as, you know, straight is better, curlier is mm -hmm. not, lighter mm -hmm. is worse. And I said, mm -hmm. unfortunately, the world does not love you. The world does not present an image of we love our black woman. And you have to love yourself first, because if you don't love yourself first, it's going to be so much easier to let that hate that others give off become you. And not only that, you have to love yourself so that you can love others and show other people that, you know, love will keep us going. And so I said that, you know, we're going to have to clean off that wall. We're not leaving that there. You have to understand why it, it doesn't need to be there. And so we, we cleaned it off.